Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd On the authority of Hussein ibn Ali the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala akhbarahu anna Ali ibn Abi Talib that his father narrated to him so this is a grandson narrating what his father something that happened to his father. And before I even go into the hadith, this is something that is important, and that is the things that happen to us in our lives, that we pass those things down to our children. Jewels of information that our children will pass on generation after generation. And this is actually how hadith were recorded and were narrated and transmitted from one generation to the next. Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet وسلم, said that his father, Ali ibn Abi Talib, told him, Inna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tarakahu wa Fatima binta Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqala lahum ala tusallun faqala Ali faqultu ya Rasulullah innama anfusana bi yadi Allahi jala wa ala fa idha shaa an yab'athana yab'athana فانصرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حين قال ذلك له يرجع ولم يرجع إليه بشيء ثم سمعه وهو مدبر يضرب فخذه ويقول كان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا علي رضي الله تعالى عنه he told his son Hussein that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tarakahu, meaning he came to visit him and Fatima at night. One night, Ali and Fatima was at home and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to their home to visit them. And this shows us that the father-in-law or the father of the daughter, even when you marry your daughter off, you are still her wali. You are still responsible for your daughter to check up on her to make, that, make sure she is okay. And not that you just marry your daughter off and whatever the husband decides to do with her, that is his responsibility. You are still the woman's wali and you should still check in on your daughter and her husband, especially the younger couples. The younger couples, they have the most problems because they spend most of their time trying to change one another. The woman trying to change him to be more like her, the man trying to change her, her to be more like him not realizing that you're not going to change anybody. Whoever you married is who you married. Who you married is who you married. No one is going to change. People don't change. Our perception, our perspectives of people change, but people themselves don't change. If you've been married for 10, 15, 20 years, you will realize that your spouse is still the same woman or the same man that you married 20 years ago. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is your perception of them, your outlook on them. You've learned to see them as human beings with flaws and mistakes and to see their vulnerabilities and you have learned to accept that. But they themselves in most instances have not changed. They have not changed. The Prophet وسلم, he went to Fatima's house to visit her and her husband. And he said to the, the Prophet وسلم, said to Ali and Fatima, he said, Ala tusallun, you guys don't get up at night and pray. Meaning you don't pray to Hajjit, you don't pray together. Because in most instances, the young couple is just about playing around. You know, you know just not really taking the marriage seriously. And the Prophet وسلم, is giving them a tool that is the glue that would help to keep the couple together. And that is the role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plays in our marriage. How many people got married, went home the night of marriage, consummated the marriage, never prayed to raka'ah, never made dua, never grabbed the woman by her forelock, put his hand on her forehead, and make dua as the Prophet ﷺ instructed us. For some of us, this is new information, but this is actually from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, when all we are concerned with is consummating the marriage. But there is two raka'ah sunnah that we should pray before consummating the marriage, out of shukr, Lillahi jalla wa'ala, out of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find you in need of a spouse and blessed you with a spouse? But we go home and we take advantage of one another and never turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Him 
for blessing us with someone that is to be our soulmate, that is to be our life partner. And we fail to see the role that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should play in our marriages. I don't know how many couples that I've married, and you ask them, what is the role of the religion in your marriage? You will find it's almost non-existent. And you're saying to yourself, how can your marriage be successful if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not play a role in your marriage? How can your marriage be successful when you're just functioning as husband and wife and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has absolutely no role in your marriage? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked them, Ala tusallun, don't you guys pray? What couple doesn't get up at night and pray together? Doesn't make dua for one another? Doesn't go into sujood and remember one another by name? Imam al-Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he died, one of his students, who, by the fam a famous scholar by the name of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, we know him as Imam Ahmed, he was one of the famous students of Imam al-Shafi. He said when Imam al-Shafi died, كُنْتُ أَذْكُرُهُ بِسْمِهِ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً وَأَنَا فِي السُّجُودِ He said, I used to mention Imam Shafi'i's name by name when I used to make dua for him in sujood for 40 years after his death. This was a man, this wasn't his spouse, this wasn't his wife. This was just a close companion, a teacher. And he used to remember him by name in dua in sujood for 40 years straight. Some of us make sujood, our wives are in the next room, we don't even mention them. Some of sisters are, are in sujood and your husband is in the next room sleep and you don't even remember him in your, in your sujood, in your dua. How can we expect to be successful couples if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't play a role? Islam, the religion doesn't play a role in our marriages. He asked them, Ayatu Salun, don't you guys pray? Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu typical response of a young man. He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, thinking, believing that he has this whole idea of life in his grasp. That's typical young people response. He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, innama anfusana biyadillah. Our souls are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, wa insha'allahu yaba'athana, wa in lam yashit lam yaba'athana. He said that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to get up at night, then Allah will get us up at night. And if Allah doesn't want to get us up at night, then he won't wake us up at night. This is his justification for not getting up at night with his wife and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said our souls are in the hands of Allah. If Allah wants to get us up, then he'll wake us up. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lam yarja ilayhi bi shayi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't respond with anything. He didn't retort with anything. Because as an adult, as a man who understands life, there's nothing that you can say to a young man at that stage in his life that will make him understand. Nothing. So you leave him to wander in, in the wilderness of his oblivion until one day he figures it out on his own. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got up and he tapped his thigh and he said, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا an ayah from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the human being is the most argumentative of creatures. Always have something to say. Always have a response. You can't just take the advice and respond and act upon it. Always have to come back and retort with something. And the human being is the most argumentative of creatures. If we want to win the, the, the hearts of our spouses, we go to the owner of the heart. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um Salama, she was asked, Ma akthar dua Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make the most? And Um Salama, she said, Kana yakulu, kana akthar dua Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma ya muqallib al kulub, thabbit kulubana ala deenik. Wa fi riwayatin kala, Allahumma ya muqallib al kulub, sarrif kulubana ila ta'atik. O oh Allah, changer of the hearts, Change my heart upon obedience to you. And in another narration, O oh Allah, changer of, the ch changer of the heart, change my heart to uh, uh, make my heart firm on your deen. Make my heart firm on your deen. Showing you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one in control of the hearts. When the Sahaba heard this, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, alayna, do you fear for us? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kayfa la? How could I not fear for you? How can I not be in fear of you or for, uh, be in fear for you when the hearts of the children of Adam are in between the two fingers of Rahman? He changes the hearts however he wills. 
Subhanallah Lazim. How why should I not be in fear? Your heart is in between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He changes the hearts however he feels. However, he sees fit, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what I'm saying is that if you want to win the heart of your spouse, you go to the owner of the heart. You don't own the heart of your spouse. Some may think that we own the heart of our spouse because we have money, because we have status, because we have position, because we are handsome. All of these things we believe that because of these things, we own the heart of our spouse. You don't own anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner. As the scholars say that if shaitan is bothering you, shaitan if he's bothering you, how do you get shaitan to stop? How do you get shaitan to stop? He said, the scholars, they give an analogy. They said, just like shaitan, the likeness of shaitan is like a barking dog. If a dog runs after you and starts barking at you, how do you get the dog to stop? The dog is not going to respond to you. The dog doesn't know you, doesn't respect you, doesn't fear you. How do you get the dog to stop? You go to its owner. You want shaitan to leave you alone? You go to the owner of shaitan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him. And likewise, if you want to win the heart of your spouse, you go to the owner of the hearts, the one whom the hearts of the children of Adam are in between his two fingers. هذا وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.